Hey, welcome to another monthly studio report for All is Fair and Dust and Air and Broken Hammer Games. I am the CEO, founder, writer, a whole bunch of goodies with this company, and I'm just going to take you through a little bit of what's been going on during the month of August 2022 with Broken Hammer and All is Fair and Dust and Air. And now, first off, um, we ended last month on the report pushing through the iOS release and we ran into some bugs, we ran into some troubles and we were estimating because um, Chris, he was working on the iOS release, he had to take about a week off for his family or things like that so we figured he's coming back into August and then we go ahead and shift right in because he was pretty much done, he was pretty much okay, yeah, we'll go but then while he was away he had a thought and the basic thought was, was like, what if we, because one of the biggest bugs we have is that the little icons on the UI, they kind of will sometimes randomly disappear. So you have to reload the game and things come back together. So his thought was, what if we just redo the UI frame, <clears throat> get rid of the buttons, and just go with clean uh, UI for, for mobile? And then we go ahead and uh, have it so all the UI functionality, all the button functionality is in the swipe functions or uh, maybe like the uh, gear like icon that's in the, the bottom right corner of the screen. And so what we did during the month of um, August was we literally did just that. He came back and we kind of, he patched something together real quick, like a simple like buttonless UI. We tested it out, it solved one of the biggest long-standing bugs that we had with the uh, mobile platform and it also gave us a um, potential for the future in what we're going to be doing in the days ahead for uh, Android platform so we went ahead we got that done we got it worked out and then we were looking at okay well we got to put this to Apple uh, we did some final testing make sure the functionality is working the swipe function is working everything's going and we got it okay we got it we sent it into Apple, and it was getting closer towards the end of the month of August. We went, we took a little bit longer than we thought it was going to do, trying to redo the UI and a few of those other things there. And Apple, literally within a, like, I would say it was like about a day or so, Apple sent us a thing back saying, we are re rejecting your app, but not because there's anything wrong with it, because we need more time to test it. So Apple's kind of, uh, we haven't heard again since. Um, they're just testing and testing and testing. So the, I think from what's happening is that one of the Apple developers got a hold of it, realized how big of a game we are, and they're actually playing the whole thing <laughs> or something. They're going through it. I, I, I We've never had this treatment before. I mean, Steam, literally you get onto Steam. Steam's just like, okay, does it load up? Yeah, it loads up. That's fine. We don't care. Google's kind of like, well, as long as you don't have these little security flaws which are caught in the automated system that they have, they don't care too much. Apple's like, we're making sure your app is going to work and we're going to go through the whole thing and we're just like, oh gosh. Ah. So we'll see coming into September. We don't know how much longer Apple's going to take on that. They may finish. They might finish within a day actually of like, me getting this up or maybe within a week. I don't. We're not sure, um, depending on what bugs they find, uh, we're going to have to f figure out something with that because if they find something and they say, yeah, we're not going to prove it because you have this issue, and if it's an issue that Strikeworks is going to have to fix, then we're going to have to postpone the iOS build, at least until Strikeworks gets everything in order on their end. So other than that, that's kind of where we're at on the iOS port. It does work. It is up. I mean, it's the positive and negatives of, of Apple's walled garden. I mean, the positive being that they want to make sure everything going on their platform is really good and works. And the negative is that, yeah, they're going to be extra scrutinizing every little thing. And the problem with our engine is, is that we're trying to jury rig and work this engine into something that it needs major updates to get it to work. But we're making it work. We've got it to work on Android. Uh, the one plus that's coming out of this is that Android build's going to be updated to the new UI. So that's all going to change. We're also going to update the itch. Uh, I think the itch is going to be one of the last builds that's going to be really updated to the new UI and stuff because we're going to be uh, probably making sure Play Store works first and then we're going to shift it over to that. Um, 
Android build like we're also testing some ad based ones so it may go for we're looking we're definitely going to look at a free to play option because Android platform is like everybody wants free to play nobody wants to pay for anything so we're looking at an ad ad based build and we have gotten some things working on that end we got the ads working we got that happening the problem is that we've been having trouble getting the ad banner from not appearing in like really annoying spots so it's we want the ad banner across the top we want maybe a splash ad every once in a while and it keeps on going like right across the the, the bottom where we have all the text and all the story stuff so it's kind of like okay come on so we're, we're michael's working on it and he's like i've inputted the commands over and over and over and google keeps on wanting to shift the ad to a different spot so we're trying to squash that bug, trying to iron that out. Uh, when it's done, uh, Android build will definitely be going to an ad-based thing with probably, we're looking at an option to pay to remove the ads for sure. Uh, the itch build, 100% we're not doing ads for the itch build right now. I, I'm, I don't really want that build to be ad-driven. I want that build to be something you, you buy it, you get it, you're, you're done. You don't, you don't buy something that has ads in it. So uh, there will be at least a couple of versions for the Android that's coming. Um, not sure how that's going to work out for iOS for itch. Uh, Mac OS build, uh, actually we could have put it through for the iOS build with a uh, like an M1 Mac option so that it could be playable on M1 Mac. We didn't do it yet at this time. We're trying to get the iOS build first and then make sure that's working and then we'll see about doing the M1 Mac build at the same time. Now M1 Mac build, um, if this iOS one goes through because, I mean, we're going to need the mouse functionality, so we're probably going to use the old UI for the M1 Mac, or even like the regular Mac, we're going to use the old UI, so we're not going to have that uh, other UI, at least I don't think, not right now, um, unless something comes up and it's like, oh yeah, we have to use the new UI build, then we'll use the new UI build. Um, anyways, either way... Uh, you can see, I'll be going through some of the UI elements. We'll see the, you'll see it in the blog, but you'll also see it on here, uh, the all new UI. And I might as well go ahead and switch to that now since we are now moving along very fast here today. And I need to bring up, you know, when you're trying to find something. There it is. Okay, now here is the new UI elements. You can see this actually in the um, blog post, but this is, I'm just bringing it up for the video. You, the people that are watching the blog, you can see now what we're talking about on the blog. Uh, some people might not see the blog versus the blog. So originally down here in this right corner, we had three UI buttons. Those were save, load, some basic there was a skip function here too uh, the common bug that we had and this is on PC platform too is that every once in a while you load up the game and the one of these or all of these vanish and they're just empty and that is a bug that we've never been able to isolate partially because it's so random we never know when it's gonna hit and so it's just like all we have to say is like reload and it just comes then everything comes back up just fine so um, mobile platform. Now this is a screenshot direct from iOS. You can see the little bar at the bottom for, that was actually off my phone, loading. but the UI is cleaner frame. We remove that and now there's just this gear handles all the function that was in the, the, the buttons down here or like the swipe function. So you swipe one way, it does one thing up under and then so we work some of those button that functionality into this. So that is all set there. I, I do believe the top buttons, because we do have like a hide UI, little tiny things are very faint. <laughs> we didn't want them to clutter up the screen. I think those might still be in, because those we never have issues with. In fact, if I, yeah, if I wince real closely at this, I can see they're, they're, they're still there. Yeah, those are meant to be faint. Those, that's a, actually part of the um, design of it. And now uh, moving on with what we worked on, uh, there was actually a lot of, of background art. Um, I'm actually featuring one behind me that got done. This is uh, the main entryway to the Baron's household. 
and stuff. I do not have it on the blog because I'm not going to show it in all its glory yet. But yeah, there it is, the main entryway to that. And we had a character. This is actually one of the characters I've looked forward to for a long time because she is based on a real person. Uh, well, I mean, everybody's kind of based on a real person. This one is directly, directly based on a real person. And this is Heather. This is the maid. I'm gonna, we're just teasing her now. She's the head maid of uh, uh, Baron Renfell. <laughs> and she is actually based on a real person that I actually worked with um, when I worked at a uh, water park. It was an entertainment sort of thing. Mean, rides, slides, everything, and I, I worked in rentals, re retail and stuff, and she was like one of the leads in rental retail, and she was like very short. She was like, uh, I mean, my wife is very short, and she was about around the same height, if not maybe a little shorter, but she just always went out of her way for everybody, and the bosses, the managers and stuff, they kind of didn't like her too much because she was a little bit more of a go-getter. For some reason, I don't know why they didn't like her so much. Everybody loved her. All the employees loved her. Uh, a lot of us looked up to her afterwards and we were just like, hey, we, we would love to work under you again because she would never ask us to do anything she wasn't willing to do herself. And so when I was writing uh, Raven's Prayer originally, I, mean, I, was, I wanted to include her as one of the first like major... Uh, homage characters that I ever did in any of the stories and so yeah she is one of the maids she is visible uh, she'll be like a major s supporting character throughout the uh, story uh, when as Raven's Prayer goes on so you will see lots of her uh, her personality is not gonna be a hundred percent the same I mean Heather was always I mean she was the best example of Heather's character, I mean, if you've seen the, sh the anime Wagneria w working, it would be Papara. And I actually went to an anime expo oh, de like a decade or so ago, and because when I, when I saw Wagneria Papara, every time I see Papara, I think of Heather. <laughs> I think of her character. So I actually went out there and I actually got a little Papara character figure, and I put it on my desk and put it somewhere, so I'm always like remembering, yeah, I remember her. I remember the impact she had on my life. I remember, yes, this is this was the example of leadership that when I was younger I looked up to. I and this is how I want to be running the company. I don't want to be somebody that's like ruling like a tyrant and such. I'd want to always be somebody that's like I don't ask people to do something that I'm not willing to do myself. So uh, that is that for. A lot of teaser images that we have for the month. I'd like to tease some more. In fact, uh, Winx really blew us away this month. I gave her an assignment because we need to get the uh, key images going a little bit more for uh, Raven's Prayer. And so she has done some key image work for, for us. If you've played through uh, the Cathedral story arc and All is Fair and Destiny Air, uh, she's done two key images for that. It was the Nakiri key image. I'm trying to be careful. I don't want to spoil too much, but there's a key image towards the end of the game. That's hers. And then there's also on one of the bad endings, she did like a. She did the. She did. I, 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 I don't want to tease everything, but she did do one of the bad ending key images, at least the two main characters uh, for that. So she did some excellent job on those. And I asked her, hey, yep, for doing some more of that. And she said, yeah, yeah. So we got her in I gave her all the key images that we're going to be doing on the initial release on, on Raven's Prayer to kind of at least get a head start on it to, for for Georgie because I mean Georgie's going to do the finals but sometimes it's helpful to have like an idea of what you're going to do with the characters what you want with the characters and she actually blew him away or it was like one of them was exactly what he had in mind the other two just gave him he's, he's like these are helping me so much. all these all the ideas for this I, I can do this really really easily once I finally get into it since I have her her work that she did so I mean we're really happy I'd love to share some uh, in fact I did share one on the blog and if you head to that that's kind of like a little concept she did that's one of the ones I can share I probably could share it here too in fact I might as well share it here just because so I don't make you all go to the other S's 
Okay, this is one of the key image concepts. This is one we can share. We finish Ravens. If you finish um, the Cathedral Arc, you finish the current story, you kind of have an idea of where this key image is going to appear. Uh, this is going to definitely be one of the first, actually the first key image that you're going to be seeing in Raven's Prayer when the story begins. So this is a nice one with uh, William as he's uh, setting forth. And this is actually going to be a key image that's going to be reused across every single story arc. So this is going to be the beginning for everything, no matter which story it is. Uh, so yeah, this is a major teaser of things to come. There is more meaning to that depending on which route William is going to take. And we won't go into that too much right now. Uh, right now going into uh, September, Georgie does have uh, at least one or two backgrounds working right now. We are working on getting the Eddings Cove docks area finished out. Um, we have put the uh, cityscape a little bit more of a hold for a time because Georgie's sort of fleshing out areas. We got a lot better idea of what we're going to do though. And right now the Eddings Cove docks are, it's going to be the first introduction when the story arrives in Eddings Cove. So we're trying to set things up really nicely. It's going to be a very big shot and uh, Georgie's, he's really confident on it. He was, he was doing really well so far on the concepts he was sharing with me. I won't share any of those right now. I don't want to tease too much ahead of time, but yeah, we got some major shots to go as well as some more characters that are coming online during the month of September. I may start shifting winks onto a few other things right now. Um, she also is going to be coming in and starting some of the expression work for a lot of the characters, but for now, we're just chipping away and uh, working this out one character, one one background at a time, making some pretty good progress overall. Um, it's unfortunate how much the uh, delay is on the uh, iOS and Android ports. We've spent so much of the year having to wrangle those back and forth, back and forth. While well, we're trying to do stuff on the other side and trying to... Yeah, but the good news is, is that's kind of starting to wrap up, starting to come into a conclusion for all the little ports, all the little other go other goodies that's going on. So, yeah, we're confident things are moving in a good direction going into the end of the year. Uh, so, we'll let you know next month. Next report, stay tuned. Uh, thanks for joining today. Appreciate your time, and we'll see you in the skies. Johnny. <laughs>